Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And though this is going to go in the FAQ playlist, this isn't really as much of a frequently asked question, but I do get a few comments and questions about this. And that is, are you concerned about storing things that are non-organic? And the answer to that is, well, it really depends. Those of you who have been following me for four years know that I try to be very careful about many of the things that I put up and store, the foods that we buy, and I, all of my garden things, everything I do is organic. So as you can see back here, I've got some zucchini I'm gonna process up hopefully today. Whatever we don't cook up right away, I'm gonna be dehydrating the rest because my freezers are full. I do everything as organic and natural and as healthy as I possibly can. I make my own chocolate from my own recipes and it's all organic. However, there are times where yes, I put up things that are not organic and maybe not the healthiest thing out there. And here's the reason why is especially now with what we're looking at coming down the road. I would much rather have non-organic foods in my food storage than none at all. So let me give you a few examples. Like right here is some grated freeze-dried cheddar. I love this stuff. Now when it comes to putting up dehydrated cheese of any kind, going with the grated kinds like this, you're more apt to find some that aren't loaded with preservatives like citric acid, such as worst case scenario, the white cheddar powder that I talked about in another video. This has a few different preservatives in it that aren't the best thing and uh, not something that I would recommend eating on a regular basis. However, if you really got a craving for cheese and cheese is not available to you because of what's happening out there and you don't have your own dairy animals to make your own cheese, something like this is better than nothing. Now I went with the white cheddar because it had a little bit less of the bad ingredients than the orange cheddar did. But, uh, again, if you really want to go more healthy than that, going with a freeze-dried cheddar, no, this is not organic, but at least it doesn't have all the same ingredients. You can always powder that up if you're looking for a powdered version. I just thought it would be fun to give this a try, and yes, I'm going to be stocking up on more of this because it's not something we're going to eat every day, but it's something that would be fun and a tasty addition to our food storage pantry. Here are some other things I have stored that are not organic, such as the Mayenberg whole powdered milk. It's not labeled as USDA organic official, but this is some really good milk here. I do, I've tried storing up several different powdered milks and there's a reason for that. So I've got the powdered goat milk, I've got the Judy's whole milk, and I've got the Hoosier Hill Farms milk. Now the other products by Hoosier Hill Farms, such as their butter, there's no added preservatives in this and I'm really happy with that. So, but it's not labeled as organic. However, again, I would rather have the butter powder in storage than not have butter at all. Same thing with sliced almonds. I've had a difficult time finding sliced almonds that are organ or organic. These ones here are not, but I think I did, uh, I'm not sure, I might have talked about it in a video, but it seems like I did finally find some of the sliced almonds as well as the whole almonds on Costco that are organic. Because I would prefer, especially with almonds, to go organic if I can. Peaches. Peaches are almost impossible to find organic around here that I can buy in bulk and can. Now, the 2017 ones I'm holding here, I know are not organic, but the ones I canned this year are. The thing about these is these ones actually taste better than the organic ones I got from Costco, but I was still thrilled to be able to get organic peaches to can up that were the same price that I've paid for the non-organic peaches that I've bought and canned up. Here's another one, I'm gonna bring this one up. Now, I do grow our own tomatoes, but I also will buy tomatoes because it's hard for us to get enough to can up for what we need for a whole year's supply because I like to make salsa, I like to dehydrate up my tomatoes, and I'll do all that with the ones I grow myself. Actually, I stopped making the salsa with my homegrown tomatoes and switched to the tomatillos for that for a green salsa. I can grow tomatillos outside of the greenhouse and get quite a bit of them, whereas the tomatoes I have to grow in the greenhouse. So I save those for my Italian sauces. But anyway, this these tomatoes we got this year for free and I canned them up. 
but they're not organic. So why did I go ahead and take them and count them up? Because they were free. I got about 50 pounds of tomatoes for free. And I'm not going to pass up a good deal like that, even if they're not organic. So with what we see coming in our to our food supplies, again, I recommend you check out Ice Age Farmers uh, channel. I will link to that in the description box below. But with the food shortages we see coming, very, very likely, in fact, I feel pretty certain they're going to happen. I would much rather have some free non-organic tomatoes, some non-organic peaches, some non-organic cheese, or even some cheese powder that might have a few bad ingredients than not have anything put up at all. So you have to choose for you what's going to be best. Obviously, each person has to look out I mean, there's so many different variables. You may live in a small remote town where even ordering stuff up organic can be difficult to get in. Peaches around here, organic peaches, are almost impossible to find. And that's why I was shocked this year when I saw them at Costco for such a good price. So you've got to do what you have to do according to what your family needs, what your family will eat, and what is available to you. And I certainly say don't pass up any good deals if you can get them. Same thing with those onions, those red onions. We got about 50 pounds of those for free, same time that we got the tomatoes. So I did everything I could to can those up. No, they're not organic, but at least with things like tomatoes and onions and certain other things, they're not those things we have to concern ourselves as much as we do with apples and peaches, unfortunately, and cherries for being non-organic. And especially uh, bell peppers and strawberries are the worst if you're, if you're going with stuff. So I never buy strawberries that are not organic. And, uh, and I'm doing the best to grow as much as I can. Now, peaches do not grow well here, so I'm really limited. We've had a couple of peach trees have got very little off of them, and we've had them for years. And so one peach every other year is not enough to put up for food storage to last us a year. And we like peaches here. So it's more important for me to have them to not than to not have them at all. And coming back again to the food fatigue thing, I would rather have a good supply of all different kinds of things from chocolate. All my the chocolate I have stored is organic, by the way to different types of cheeses. I do, by the way, still have some big blocks of cheddar cheese that I got from Azure Standard that are organic that are in my freezer. So I'm trying to cover all my bases. And that's why I thought I'd give this cheese powder a try. It's the first time I actually broke down and bought a cheese powder because every cheese powder I've looked at, no matter what company, has had something like citric acid and other ingredients added to it. But because of what I see coming, I decided I'm gonna go ahead and take the leap and get this because you know what we eat pretty healthy most of the time anyway that that's the thing is our bodies are made to heal themselves as long as we limit the amount of foods that aren't as healthy and focus more on the good healthy things it's uh where our bodies can heal from a little bit it's the death by a thousand cuts that we have to watch out for so if unlike me you're still on prescription medications and you're drinking fluoridated water these are things that we've totally cut out of our lives so i don't feel that adding a little bit of something like this every now and then is going to kill us because we are very healthy people even though we're in our mid-50s which I know is not old, but to some people that's considered old. Yes, I do get concerned about trying to store up as much natural, organically raised stuff as I can, but I'm not gonna pass up uh, free tomatoes because they're not organic, and I am gonna go ahead and can non-organic peaches. Remember, something in your food storage is better than nothing. Yes, try to go as healthy as you possibly can in what you store up, but also think, in, think about adding things. Just like I, I put in my food storage beyond rice and beans, I showed a lot of organic stuff in there. But a lot of my focus in there was about making sure you put up things that will help prevent you from getting food fatigue because all you have stored up is rice and beans and maybe some organic cheese. So. It's about trying to cover all of the bases. Okay, well, I hope that answered that question and that gives you some ideas. And also, I really want to put out the idea, though, yes, go as healthy as you can. I would rather see you guys put up food of any variety because something is better than nothing if you've got an empty belly. All right, well, thanks for watching. Take care, and God bless.